So I'm getting an early, like I said, I'm getting an early start. So I'm going to go and explore the city and get some like first impressions, how the people are, how the city looks, what the architectural style is. I'm going to try to stop and grab a, um, if possible, a traditional breakfast. Well, so far, uh, the people are really nice. They're the nicest that I've seen or experienced in the Balkans. Uh, people are very warm and they're very happy that you're visiting their country. So and I want to showcase that to you. So right now we're going to head towards the main square from the hostel that I'm staying at and explore it. We're also going to explore some other parts of the city and I'm going to try to get some breakfast this morning. They don't really do breakfast, but they usually do like a, a coffee and a croissant or something like that is what the hostel owner said. I'm going to see if I can find a spot to get something traditional or something. So we'll see. This is one of the main squares that leads to one of the markets. As you can see, everyone's out early. The kids are playing football. And this is close to the center. Like your shirt. Who is it? Yeah. You know who it is? Yeah, I know. Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> when she was young. <laughs> she was very beautiful. Where are you from? Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Where is Jamaica? Uh, Black Paradise. Yeah, yeah bro. All day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. All right. And that's like the hospitality you get. In most of the areas, um, Albanians are very nice. They're very warm. Um, they're just different. Like you have to come experience the Balkans, even as a black person. It, it's it's easy here, and you know that's an issue for us. That we always look at places that we can go to that's safe, that's um, less racist. But you have like a different peanuts. You have cranberries, you have blueberries, you have apricots, you have peanuts, you have everything. <laughs> you also have like restaurants and stuff if you want to come and eat. These are one of the um, coffee spots in Albania that I've been like working from. It's like a chain. It's, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's called like Mulleri. It's similar to like Starbucks, but better. And uh, you can get like uh, smoothies, coffee, tea, um, espressos. I'm not really a coffee person, but I've been a coffee person since coming to the Balkans. And this is a little bit of what you can get. These are my favorite because they're 100% like fruit juices, no preservatives, Fanta, Coca-Cola, usual, water. Can I get a um, shot of espresso? Uh, you want it for you to take away? Uh, for here, I'm just quickly. Yeah. Huh? One espresso? One espresso, yeah. Here you go. Thank you. So one espresso is like um, 60 lex, yeah. 70, which is like uh, 60 cents. You see the price there?
camera angle right because it keeps like uh tilting and then the sun is like the sun is in my eyes so i'm having a shot of espresso and anyone that knows me knows i don't really like drink coffee i'm a matcha person but since i've been in the balkans in, in italy i've been drinking coffee a lot and i don't like it because it can stain your teeth yeah, i know my teeth be white so i'm not really a fan of coffee but we're gonna have some today so i can like cheer me up and i can work for a couple hours and show y'all a good time in uh the capital of albania Like I said, this was um this was 70 lex, so it's about 60 cents, 55, 60 cents. Street murals like this are very common, so you'll see them um, throughout the city, painted on different walls. And I'm gonna show you a few of them as I run into them. Damn, I just missed one. But and cafe culture is very strong. So and this is like throughout the whole entire Balkans. When you're in the Balkans, everyone's at these different cafe shops. They're all designed like really well. Uh, people are sitting all day and it's like coffee smoothies everything you can think of people are working and they're chatting they're socializing that's very common in the balkans and in albania So right now we're gonna enter the main square. And this is one of the only malls that uh, survived. The, uh, the, the only malls, and you see with the interesting design, this is the Ottoman style that survived the communist uh, regime because everything during the communist regime was destroyed, all religious. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Sorry for the bad lighting.
Yo, so another thing that I want to talk about is, hey, <laughs> another thing I want to talk about is uh, bunkers all around the city. So during the communist regime, the, the dictator built all these bunkers. I'm talking about this, there's like thousands of bunkers over the whole country, but specifically in the city. And it was to protect the communist government from um, invasion from America, Russia, whoever wanted to, to come and invade. And they turned the bunkers actually into museums. So we're gonna go into this museum, see what it's about. And they're, like, these are like five, 10 stories, 20 stories underground. And it was that if someone invaded, they could get the city and the officials underground um, and and out of harm's way, I guess, from from nuclear bombs or whatever what they believe that was coming. But a lot of people have died and the museums now showcase all the people that died in the regime that were against the regime that went missing and, and stuff like that. So we're gonna we're gonna explore it, we're gonna see what it's about, and I'm gonna show you show it to you. So these are all the people that um, are missing or died and the communist regime didn't discriminate. Uh, rich, poor, women, doctor, lawyers, uh, relig religious people, nobody was off limits. And as you can see, the kids are here. You got people doing photo shoots. It's really cool geometric styles. Hey, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, so we're doing a bunker tour, right? So all across the city, in these different areas, you have bunkers like this. And during the communist time, you had one soldier here, and then, which was facing out. And then you had another soldier that was, I'll go over to the other bunker over here. You see where that guy's laying down? Straight ahead, there's another bunker. And there's another one over there. So this is very common. Now, um, some of them have been turned into like art museums and stuff like that. Or bathrooms. <laughs> I'm not going in there because it smells. But to just give you an idea how they look. Some of them are like big, five, ten, ten stories below ground. We're gonna visit some of those later, and then, but most are just like that. So you'll see bunkers all throughout the city in different parts of the city in the parks and stuff like that. There's another one right there. So yeah, like I said, these are all common um, throughout much of the capital and uh, in different parts of the country in different areas. And they have left them so they can showcase what was left from the communist era so they don't go back. 